Uh, I just actually, uh, on, on the mention of, of, of Steve's, uh, or no, CRISPR's app, people are moving to dry and hot zones. I, I actually have a, a little footnote in the book about an academic study, and I just wanted to add this comment, which is that uh, they, they looked at the, the, the correlation between population and precipitation in the United States in 1850, and it was very strong. People lived where it was wet. And then looked at the same question in 1990, and the correlation was zero, right? So people essentially moved like you would expect, where it was sunny. And that was through the, the, the brilliant engineering that brought water to where people wanted to live. Uh, and we'll hear more about how engineering has been happening for thousands of years. But the, the theme of the book is, we took for granted abundant water at the start of those pipes. And if you talk to anybody you know, about Owens Valley in Los Angeles, there started to be some friction over 100 years ago. And many parts of the world, which is the material I cover in this discussion in the book, in the blog, in many parts of the world, they are arriving at an end of abundance, and the theme is that those institutions that have been working for thousands of years, or, or hundreds of years, or whatever, may not be functioning so well when water itself is scarce. It's not engineering talent, it's not metals, in some ways it's not even energy, it's actually the water that we actually put in the pipes that was free, and probably everybody here knows that the water that they get is free in the sense that you have a right to it and take it. So that water now is becoming valuable. It's becoming a commoditized good. It's, it has a value greater than zero. So that's the theme of the book, discussing how to change life based on, on, on that uh, trend towards uh, scarcity. Uh, 